Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today we will discuss how well the COVID-19 RNA vaccines protect you. If you watched my video from earlier, you learned how the vaccine works, but now let's answer how effective will the vaccine be? Pfizer-BioNTech announced that their vaccine had an efficacy rate of 95%, and Moderna put the figure for its vaccine at 94.5%. Those numbers are amazing. The Food and Drug Administration had said it would consider granting emergency approval for vaccines that showed only 50% efficacy. To put this into perspective, historically, the influenza vaccine has had a 50 to 60% efficacy against infection with influenza A viruses and about a 70% efficacy against influenza B viruses. But the effectiveness of the influenza vaccine is about 40 to 60% each year. Wait, what? What's the difference between efficacy and effectiveness? It's an important clinical distinction and let me explain. Efficacy is just a measurement made during a clinical trial. Effectiveness is how well the vaccine works out in the real world. In the case of Pfizer, for example, the company recruited 43,661 volunteers and waited for 170 people to come down with symptoms of COVID-19. And then those people had a PCR test. Out of these 170, 162 had received a placebo shot, and just eight had received the real vaccine. These results can be further reviewed by going to the New England Journal of Medicine article from December 10th. The link is posted below. In the case of the Moderna vaccine, the company recruited 30,000 volunteers. 90 patients that received placebo had symptoms and tested positive for COVID-19, 11 of which were severe cases. Five volunteers that had received placebo came down with symptoms and tested positive for COVID-19, but none of these were severe cases. From these numbers, researchers calculated the fraction of volunteers in each group who got sick. Both fractions were small, but the fraction of unvaccinated volunteers who got sick was much bigger than the fraction of vaccinated ones. The scientists then determined the relative difference between those two fractions and this is efficacy. When there's no difference between the vaccine and placebo group, the efficacy is zero. If all the sick people had received a placebo, then vaccine efficacy would be 100%. Efficacy is usually going to be higher than effectiveness because out in the real world, there are usually confounding issues like human error and chronic health conditions that may affect vaccine responses that may not have been accounted for in the initial study data. But let's talk a little bit more about what we can expect from the vaccine and what's simply not known yet. The outstanding questions we still have are, number one, how long will immunity last? The current vaccines have only been tested for about six months and it's possible immunity could wane over time. We just don't know yet. Number two, we don't know whether people can still transmit the disease to others if they've been immunized. The studies on these particular vaccines waited until people developed symptoms of COVID-19 and then performed a PCR test on them to confirm an infection. But this may have missed patients that were asymptomatic carriers of COVID-19. We don't have any data about these patients and whether the vaccines prevented asymptomatic cases as well. So we can't answer whether this vaccine prevents infections, but we do know that it prevents symptoms. And this is an important question to answer because if the vaccine simply prevents symptoms, but patients can still have a COVID-19 infection, then COVID-19 can potentially still be spread to others. And this vaccine may not stop the spread of COVID-19. This is why the recommendation for social distancing and masking still stands, even after getting the vaccines, at least for now, until we have more data about this. Number three, long-term safety. As I mentioned previously, the safety data so far is very reassuring. Side effects such as sore arms, redness at the injection site, headache and fatigue have been reported more commonly than with flu vaccines. 
but the risk of adverse events as reported in the New England Journal of Medicine article about the Pfizer vaccine was 0.4% in patients that got the vaccine versus 0.3% in patients that got the placebo. With all that said, I would advise you to not get this vaccine the day before a big meeting or event. <laughs> you may feel unwell for a day or two after receiving the vaccine. For those that have received the Shingers vaccine or the vaccine to prevent shingles, it sounds like the COVID vaccine has elicited a similar reaction. And the second dose of the COVID vaccine may cause slightly more severe symptoms. So keep that in mind as you plan when to take it. As I mentioned previously, we don't have safety data beyond six months. And as more people get the vaccines, we will have more and more real life data. And by the time many of you receive the vaccine, we'll probably have another four to six months of safety data available. And other types of vaccines will also be developed and we can start considering receiving those as well. For me personally, I plan to take both doses of the COVID-19 vaccine when it's offered by my employer. I will likely have an opportunity to take the Pfizer vaccine in the next one to two months and will be sure to report my experience when I do receive it. Thanks again for joining me.